Barron's going the same direction, knifing it super deep. Mamiya comes out. And that's exactly what I'm telling. Like, what did he do wrong? He blocked um, Barron on that first wave. Um, but he was a little bit on the shoulder in that second wave, just kind of doubling up. And the skills that Baron has to actually pull that drop off and get that speed off the off the bottom. Baron pushed him deep, and then Mamiya locked into this one. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. He was so late. Are you kidding me? How did he stick that drop? And not just that. Usually, 99% of the people just get stuck on the bottom, and he was able to just drive through those sections like it was a two-foot wave. That was impressive. So check this out. There's a lump right there. He airdropped and straight as soon as he hit the bottom, he did that big pump down the line and somehow managed to, yeah, do what he did. It was, and, it was impressive. And he would not be celebrating like that unless he had a very special feeling. Check out this number, a perfect 10 for Baron Mamiya at Pipeline to take the lead over John John Florence. It is so daunting to understand where you are in the lineup as we see Pickles. Molly putting her head down, grabs a rail and pipeline, pulls up and under. She's still going and gets the exit. Oh, goodness. You little legend, you. Yeah. Molly picked up and spat out of the pit at pipe, showing how well she can go backhand or forehand on demand. That is going to be a wonderful score and extend her lead out front. Flick, take us through this one. This was absolutely insane. Grabs the rail, pulls up underneath the lid, comes flying out with the spin. In that, wow. For me, that was so technical. So, so, so technical. She, and so hard to do on your backhand. She held that rail for so long. It was just so beautiful to watch. I'm, I'm, my jaw's to the floor right now. This was just... Yeah, it's going to be near perfect, this. You know, her technique coming off the bottom there, the way she's able to pull up on that outside rail and just get in the tube, and she was so deep. There we go. There we see it. A 10-point ride to kick off the year. Molly Picklum. She wanted a 10. -er. She wants a 10. And she gets a 10. This is the decision for John to go first. All right, that's what I mentioned. They, he wasn't deep enough on the takeoff right there, but because he's so good at slowing himself down in those waves, he was able to actually... Um, drag and wipe all the speed he had and actually get a very good barrel out of that. But then on the other side, you see um, Baron already scratching, battling deeper. But see right here, front angle. As much as that was incredible, it wasn't as deep as Baron's wave. Um, and yeah, I have no doubt that Baron's going to have a better score than John on that, on that exchange. And this was Caitlin Simmons behind, taking off, just negotiating that chandelier section so well. That was such a technical, hard to read barrel, but she did so well to hold on there. So Caitlin Simmers, <laughs> wow factor. That was that was a hard wave to ride. That was so beautiful to watch, and uh, I was really, really stoked to see her just back up. You know her amazing performance that she's already had in this event, but that was a hard wave to read. That had a lot of bump on lump on the face and this little dismount here she almost lost it there here we go this is the moment right here first wave of the final for molly drops into this huge backdoor pit comes flying out from behind the section there <laughs> i just can't believe that she's had the ability to maintain this momentum the whole way through this entire event it is super incredible yeah she has been the absolute standout of the event and look at this this was really hard to, to ride she almost had to wait for this uh chandelier get underneath it here and this is where the whole wave just unloaded on the reef there and look at her just screaming through that section wow that's going to be an excellent score to start off the final from the competitors you know but john just paddled by and there was not a smile on his face he was like pretty dead set and ready to do battle and i feel like it's like a, a i don't know you know usually he's got that little bit of a smile he doesn't have it right now and that's something i i feel like we could touch on you know on his go for this year not just this contest but i really think he's you know obviously back in this for a world title and he looks really healthy and amazing obviously his, his surfing out here is amazing the way that he molds the barrel and the way that he breathes in and out of it and can can really like actually make the wave do what he wants to do almost is uh, un it's untouchable and it's so fun to watch so i can't wait to see it i think john and, and baron in the final would be amazing well we're getting close to there because john john we're checking out the replay just scored 
an 8.27. So John has now gone into the excellent range. Look at this from right over on the left side of, of the wave and pulling through. And look at this control in the barrel, getting more speed just when he needs it and just coming flying out. Even he's impressed and he's, uh, yeah, look at, so sick. Yeah, what's uh, most impress impressive for me on that wave is just the beginning of it, how he was able to control that speed and get so deep in that first section. Um, feet way in front of the, in the board, just helping him out drive through that thing. But check it out, this um, both arms stalling. Kind of has that little airdrop feeling on it. Engage the rail again. It gets so deep in that first section. It's so hard for you to control the speed through all that, um, those powerful waves. And right there is just battle to the metal and just going for the win. 9.77, nearly a 10 for Baron Mamiya. Pelling looking right and he just knows already this thing's going to just start running down the line in one, two, three, four, five. Five pumps and like a few just um, through the middle of that. That was so incredible from him. This is going to be the best score he's got so far. What did you think of this, Louis? Yeah, awesome. Nice arm drag. And I like just here where he, then he hits the accelerator because he sees the last bit as he gets over near Ains. And uh, yeah, he's been looking really good in the Red Bull Athlete Zone earlier. He just had this steely look, but very calm. It's the most calm I've seen him in a long time. And he knows this is his stage to perform. And look at that, just pumping again for the last section and just timing it to absolute perfection to come out. Nine point ride for Baron Mamiya. Because this was an absolute bomb. It was so steep, it had a wobble in it. And the way she rode this was just oh, beautiful. It was textbook. I think it might come just under. That's, uh, I think, just ever so slightly under. I feel like it's it's excellent. Like, I think that's a nine-point ride. Just wow. looking at it in real time over my shoulder, this was an absolute bomb. The takeoff was just incredible. She just disappeared from the whitewash. It wasn't as deep as Molly's 10, obviously, but... Oh, I think it's going to be so close. If not, just a little... Oh, the drop. I mean, when we look at it here again, drop, super deep drove through that section I think it's going to be splitting hairs there I, I mean I, she, needs a, she needs an 8.61 the judges could give her an 8.5 because it was beautiful but I just think it's a 9 point ride I think yeah I think it will it, it will go there that's coming kind of in an angle she's as she's taking off you can see the wave down the line is growing she stalls and right there so much water with air just making it very hard for you to manage um, engaging the rail and the fins and she was able to do it that was clutch from her and just show how um, how much confidence she has at and a wave at back door that was excellent surfing on a very good wave and she got rewarded oh look at this angle yeah this is this is what makes it so tricky on this wave right there she's heating straight like almost snowboarding you know like a lot of air in the water just making it very, very tricky to ride, and she pulled it off somehow. She wheeled herself through that section, and she did it again. She got an 8.17 yesterday. This wave, another 8.17 for Molly Piccolo. And just as I felt like it was the first time of the event that she actually had her back against the wall, because she saw that, check this out, like it starts to double up, and it gets on the first shelf right there. She has to knife it so nicely in one, two, three pumps, coming after the spin, that was just, Perfectly reading. That was the best wave of the day so far on the woman's side. And check this out. This paddle. The wave doubles up. She was just under enough. Nice double hand um, drag. And right there, she's just starting. Paddle to the metal. Three pumps coming out of this, after the speed. That's miles ahead of her six-point ride. So that, that was as good as it gets for backdoor. Right here. She stalls. Identify the wave's going to start running. One two and the third and she shifts the foot forward too like you see her back foot is in front of the front of the pad right there as you see it and that just gives her the stability and the drive that she needs for that way this is what happened during the catch up with john john florence katie simmers flick whoa katie takes off so deep on this one at back door and comes flying on out what a way to start the women's quarterfinal. She is already on fire. Laura, what'd you see here? Oh my goodness, just behind the peak, completely backdooring that section. That is what we love to see. Katie Simmers, we know that she's one of the stylish women to join the tour, but look at the way she paddled in on the angle, completely backdooring that big 
gnarly backdoor peak and that is going to be an excellent score for Katie to start this uh, quarterfinal off against Tatiana. Loved this. Just got that one beautiful pump. Knew it was opening up so nice and wide and look at the scores. That is excellent surfing. She looks so small in that wave. In quarterfinal number one, John John does it in the final seconds with this ride right here. I love the way she just threw her arms up and she's got the little bonus barrel at the end too. So Pickles just finding a beautiful backdoor tube this afternoon. I just love this, the way that she uh, just threw her whole body into that and then just was able to get that second section as well. Canal, what did you love about this? Well, the way she got that last pump in before getting under the under the lip, it was so technical. Um, she needed to get that pump because that wave was running pretty fast. Uh, but it's so nice to see a uh, backdoor kind of waking up here better late than never. Totally. It almost seemed like a little bit hard to read that wave because it looked like it was going to stretch out. Look, it was such a steep takeoff. Love the way she just slid into this arm in the face, pulled up under it. Just got to enjoy that. And you can see peace signs into a classic Molly Picklum carve at the end. So this was a beautiful read by Molly just such a dreamy backdoor drainer <laughs> and finishing off there. What a years on tour as we look at this wave just so deep, up under the leap, flying on out. Kind of seems like he's not putting a foot wrong, really. we got to take a look at this 8.5 right here. Wow, this wave from Jordy, absolutely just threading the needle through this one. He was so deep, came flying on out, and he knew it. <laughs> 8.5. Such a beautiful surf wave, but that is just the contrast of surfing right now when you compare that to Connor's last heat. I mean, there's just nothing like that out there, and then all of a sudden it just turned on. This is so beautiful to watch, and the technique. Jordy Smith's been spending a lot of time here. He's got a home on the North Shore. Jordy, I mean, he's one that pff, surfing like this in really challenging, tough conditions and coming through with clutch you got to put his name in the hat for a, for a title this year at Pipe. And he's already getting barreled at backdoor, then improved to a 7.93. That was on the non-priority side of his heat. Look at him still looking to close this out. Even though Kate's still combo, Leo wants more. Packing this one super deep. Another incredible make for Leonardo Firavanti. Putting on a master class performance in these conditions. And just think about his performance on the way, but also just being an incredibly smart competitor. I mean, that's that's a win. That's a perfect heat surfed by Leo Firavanti. Let's take a look, look at, at this flick. Oh, it's just so, such a late drop. Engages with that rail so deep in the barrel. Weaves through and comes flying on out. You can just tell <laughs> this angle here just so late up underneath that lip. And well, that barrel just stayed the same size the whole way too. A lot of the barrels we've seen today sort of have um, diminished in size. They've got smaller as they've surfed it. But this one just held its size the whole way through. He was so deep and just fully engulfed. The wave spits and it looks like he got gobbled up there, but he just comes shooting on out. And hey. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It may have been a little bit of divine intervention that his thruster... <laughs> Look at the react from the crowd. <laughs> Here we go. Let's have a look. Takes off. And he's in the tube there. He's really deep. Comes out of his first section, stalls again, and then speeds up. You know what? Even... Yeah. It could be higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here again from the water, Joel. Yeah, it, just so technical. You know, I think... He slowed down, but he put himself right on the foam ball, and that's that's what you want to see, right? You want to see him completely disappear, and then as the wave sped up, he pumps right through it and makes it look too easy. Wow. It looks like he yeah. did he did better his score there. So here we point one seven. Yeah, let's take a look again in slow motion to really appreciate the technique, the stop and go that he's able to do. Just 
patrolling. Back to John's. This one here was just a disappearing act. It just stretched so far down the line and just kept weaving and weaving and weaving through each section there. Wasn't done yet. Finishes off with a nice car, but it reminded me of that wave last year, you know, where most of the camera operators were like, no way is he coming out of this. And there was one, I think it might have been Johnny, who was still on. He was like, no, I believe, I believe you're coming out. And all of a sudden, it just came firing out of this barrel. And this is this, it. This board looks quite short here. It's an excellent number. Here's all of our judges' scores <laughs> a 9.17 for John John Florence. You can see it's a couple of 9.5s thrown in the mix. Take out the high, the low, 9.17 for John John. And his stats are going to improve here at Pipeline. But check this one out. That was a gem of a wave. Nice offshore, super clean, and he was just driving through that barrel perfectly. And not to mention, finishing it off with the bang. Solid finishing move, and what a great feeling for Crosby Cam. Yeah, that, that must feel insane. Big wow, guy, but what's he doing there? His board had, didn't really stop moving as soon as he took off. Yeah, it was kind of scary right at first. I was scared he was going to like not do that first pump to get over that foam ball, but he read it perfectly. And uh, Yeah, that, that must feel insane. Not bad when you're making your rookie debut and you're in the excellent range. Exactly. Big Again, slam best there. in the world. It must feel pretty good. Accomplishing a lot in a short period of time. One more look, Jesse. Yeah, that might have been one of the biggest waves we had all morning. Um, beautiful backdoor wave just behind um, that apex, and that was very deep. See it right here? He's just behind enough, giving him that good roll in into um, backdoor in that section. And right there, it almost felt like he wasn't going to stick that thing. He started to close on top of him. The spit came out, and he just snuck just by a little bit. That was impressive right for him. And, he was rewarded. He is there. That's what he's saying. <laughs> there he is. Look at that. But somehow he came out of that. Check this out. Kind of oh. like that was kind of a mistake, but it turned out to be good because put himself so deep and that was an amazing finish turn. That's going to be excellent. Wow. Wow. What a finish as well. Going for broke, knifing this section and then pulls that rail up and under. Strider Wazalewski, what'd you see? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is radical. Yeah, Ramsey. Palin by, he's psyching that under the lip, just mayhem out here, backhand just, this, this has been insane out here, how gnarly these guys are on the backhand. Vigilo, under that hook, he looked like he was no hand and he grabbed and went over the foam ball looking into it. I was like, are you kidding? He looked like he was almost belly boarding and it came flying out of that thing. I don't know, it's just, I love this. The goofy foot madness is happening out here. We gotta love it. Gotta absolutely love it, Snake. We goofy love moments together, like this. Yeah, they certainly do, don't they? <laughs> You love it, and uh, you love it when you see him go backhand. I mean, obviously, such a hard skill set to achieve backhand, but even a finishing move like that, Snake. Unbelievable, and I hope they call that as made because that was incredible to stay on his feet. 20, 20 minutes he waited. Takes off here, drives down the line. You can just see that technique. He had to weave so many times in that barrel there. It was really, really technical. But, yeah, talk about nerves of steel. Look how glassy and beautiful this pipeline barrel is and just love the way he's pumping. He's on the foam ball there, it was so deep. That is going to feel absolutely amazing. Nothing can feel better than waiting for so long with priority and then turning this in. <laughs> uh, one of the best waves in the last, you know, couple of heats that we've seen. So just picture perfect, pig dog style here. He's, he's so stylish. Oh, so stylish. And you really here, you can really see that technique. And that's not an easy thing to do, grabbing your rail and then also being able to pump down through the tube, like really technical, comes flying out, beautiful style. Back to current action. This is an 8.93, Laura, for Baron Mamiya. Yes, excellent wave for Baron Mamiya. That was, that was a wild one. Look how thick and chunky it went here. Just let's go, big pump, almost went too high there, had to readjust and just got spit out of that bow. You could tell that he was absolutely stoked with that. Look at how it drops out here. He gets so low off the bottom, realizes, got to put my foot on the, on the gas, and uh, yeah, just pushes through that section. It's so cool what Baron did on that wave, in which he went from grabbing the rail, letting go to get that big pump in. We can see it here again, grabbing the rail, let's go right here, AI style, gets the pump in, then back into the three-point stance. Yeah, that was just so technical, you know, constantly adjusting every little bit, you know, having to come off the bottom and realize I've got to get get going. We've got some action to cover. Here is a split peak. Yeah, here we go. 
This looks like Imai flying out of that back tall tube. Beautiful carving maneuver there. So that's the actual first wave. And you can see there wasn't a bunch of wash throughs coming through, so it was it was time for a good wave to come through. And you know, luckily, or well, the skill of Lawrence having priority during that wave, you could see how perfect that cylinder was and how epic it was all the way through the end of that wave. So you know, right now we're gonna see some more really uh, quality waves coming through as the conditions are absolutely butter out here. It's just perfect. Checking out these replays and John John Florence, just a master at the barrel. When we talk about pipeline, John John has the highest heat winning percentage of everyone in this event. 71% heat winning percentage at pipeline for surfing like that, Jesse. Yeah, and like what's impressive about this wave right here, you're gonna see the spit coming out. And what that does, it makes you completely blind. So basically for a split, a split second right there, it was all about feeling. Like, he had so many repetitions out here that he knows what he has to do, even if he's not looking. So it's almost like he can do it in his sleep. And just calming it up with a nice carve, just a little extra half a point right there for him. This is going to be an excellent way. We had everything. Look at this. This is an absolute teepee back door. A bit wider, almost at eight section, and went so armedy, but he snuck through. Still spat him out three times a charm. This is his third wave, and... Look, he separated himself from Felipe over there, and I'm sure Felipe, look, he's watching out the back just going, damn, where was I for that? That could hurt to hear this number come through. Yeah. Felipe, halfway through the heat, hasn't stood up. What do you think on this one, Marley? This opened up so much here. He must have just been standing there going, ooh, yeah. And then but then it got a bit sketchy. Yeah, he got clamped there, but he went high and stood strong, bulldogged out of there. Pipeline, I mean, back door, letting him out there. He's going to be stoked though, like again, first heat. How about this one, Molly? This is incredible. The line he had to take to make this, I mean, that just proves the wild card, why they're so scary. They know how to ride a barrel, especially here in Hawaii. Good on him. Jackson works hard and he puts in his time out there Whoa. and this is what the outcome of it is. Oh, what an angle. What a moment for him. Is this his debut? Like, First heat ever on tour? Yeah, this is it. Jackson Bunch getting the call up, representing the Hawaii region. Look at the entry and how wide open this one was. One two. Crucial over the foam ball. Wow. Look at the numbers. The wild card turns in an 8.77 on the buzzer. Incredible performance from third to first on an absolute bomb at Pipeline. Well done, Jackson Bunch. Ethan Ewing goes to second and Hauschman. There's all the water patrol just going, look at this wave. You can just see it coming. Cole paddling out, watch the whole thing. Woo, that was intense. That was some great action. That's what we came for. Griffin Colapinto showing up. Yeah, we're watching the replay right now, Strider, and multiple angles really to appreciate how thick and gnarly that wave was that Griffin just uh, got through there. Oh. Even just this takeoff and how low his center of gravity was, how he adjusted when he hit that little warble. It was, it was so technical. It was such a big barrel. There were so many ribs in that barrel that if you notice, he's kind of having to uh, weave through those cords that are, that are um, kind of wanting to bump him off of his board. If you notice, he's up and then he goes down, then he finally rises to get out of it. So That was just so beautifully surfed. Mm-hmm. When you hear hoots from the water, when you hear hoots from the beach, oh. when you have that kind of reaction to a wave like this, that spells excellent scores. You're looking at an 8.5 for Griffin Cola Pinto on that wave. The best wave, in my opinion, of the heat so far. See it right there? He takes off very late, and right there, it almost loses the rail. Let the let the um, his hand go off the rail so he can regroup it and just coming out after the speed. That was a beautiful rhythm wave. Just going over the foam ball right there, just just on top and um, ahead enough so he was able to come out of that. Beautiful read, um, rhythm wave for Callum. So impressed with Callum Robson, like you mentioned, had to adjust when he was in the belly of that one. And there was so much energy coming out of the pit there. Stoked he was able to hang on. Yes, that was that was beautiful rhythm wave for him. And he's always surprising us. Like, as soon as he gets um, a challenging um, condition right in front of him, he's able to capitalize on those moments. And amazing speed, so much energy into that wave, and he's coming out after the speed. So that was a beautiful rhythm wave for him. And yeah, and here as we see, see Callum battling for, but he was way too far out, and Medina disidentified. And right there, see all that foam? 
and how he's able to engage his rail and fins throughout that. So foam is basically water with air, which makes it almost like at least 50% harder for you to engage and keep the drive through. And he was capable of doing that, and that's how impressive he is. He just adapts every time a challenge comes his way. Right there, that second and third pump was just enough. As soon as the, like, the door was shutting on him, he was able to sneak out. A little bit from behind, feet moved forward that much just to give that extra um, foam under his foot and um, drive through the, through the wave. And as soon as the wave was shutting down,